Hi guys, welcome to this short session on urinary casts. Today we'll try and talk about what urinary casts are, what the different types of urinary casts are, where they're seen, and lastly, on how to identify them on microscopy. So, fairly high yield topic, let's get started. So firstly, the first question is, what are urinary casts? So, urinary casts are nothing but cylindrical aggregations of proteins or cylindrical aggregations of mucoproteins that are formed in the distal nephron and distal nephron is nothing but your distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts so urinary casts are nothing but cylindrical shaped structures or cylindrical shaped aggregations of mucoproteins that are formed either in the tct or the collecting ducts and these are formed due to precipitation of something called the tam hosfold mucoprotein or the tam hosfold protein so you might have already heard of the tam hosfold proteins remember these tam hosfold proteins are normally or physiologically secreted by the renal tubules and they are the highest um, or the protein that is most excreted in the urine and it's physiological but in sometimes in some conditions these tam hosfold proteins will precipitate within the urine and within the ducts particularly the DCT and the collecting duct and lead to a formation of cylindrical aggregate of these proteins. Sometimes cells may be also incorporated into these aggregates depending on the disease. So all you have to remember, they are cylindrical aggregates of mucoproteins that are formed either in the DCT or the collecting ducts or both that are formed due to the precipitation of TAM Hosfold mucoproteins and they can be identified on urinary microscopy and are hence a useful diagnostic tool and that's how it comes into the exams. So depending on the pathology and depending on the morphology rather, there are two types of urinary casts that you should know about. You have the cellular casts or the acellular casts. So the casts which are the cylindrical aggregations of mucoproteins that contain cells are called cellular casts and the casts which have no cells but are just aggregations of mucoproteins are called acellular casts. So let's talk about the classification. So under cellular casts, you have the hyaline cast, the granular cast, the waxy casts and the fatty casts. And under the cellular casts, you have the RBC cast, WBC cast, bacterial cast and epithelial cell casts. Now let's talk about the first one and the most common one, the hyaline cast. So remember, hyaline casts are smooth and clear in appearance. They are composed primarily of TAM Hosfall proteins. They are, can be seen physiologically but also seen in exercise, on patients on diuretics and on dehydration. And remember, I told you since they are physiological, they are also the most common type. So smooth, clear, most common can be physiological, but also seen in exercise, diuretics and dehydration. Second cast we'll talk about are the granular cast. So these are slightly more visible. They are granular in nature, hence called granular cast. So they have a grainy appearance and they are cigar shaped. You can see in this picture, they are cigar shaped or tapering. They are composed of primarily of degenerative proteins and they are seen in chronic renal failure, acute tubular necrosis and severe exercise. If you want to know a little extra point, if these are muddy brown in color, it's more suggestive of acute tubular necrosis. So they are granular, more easily seen, cigar shaped, seen in chronic renal failure, muddy brown ones seen in acute tubular necrosis and also in severe exercise. Now we'll talk about the most quizzed or the most important cast from the exam point of view, which is the broad cast. So it's very similar to a hyaline cast, but much broader. So a broad cast or a waxy cast is mainly seen in chronic renal failure. So anytime you see broad cast, you should think of chronic renal failure and which cast has the worst prognosis or which cast is indicative of the worst prognosis. Presence of broad casts in urine is indicative of the worst prognosis because it's in chronic renal failure. Such large casts can only be passed out when you are in chronic renal failure. Sometimes also in renal amyloidosis, particularly if they say waxy casts, it's usually renal amyloidosis, but the typical broad casts are for chronic renal failure. Now we'll talk about the next type, the fatty casts. Again, I want you to remember these contain lipid droplets or oval fat bodies. You can see in the picture, you can see these are the oval fat bodies and they are mainly seen in nephrotic syndrome, sometimes seen in hypothyroidism. But if you want to remember something, fatty cast nephrotic syndrome. Next, you have your cellular cast. These contain cells. So they can be the RBC cast, WBC cast or epithelial cast. RBC cast contain RBCs. So they are seen in glomerular nephritis. Remember, there's glomerular damage. So RBCs can leak through into the urine and they become part of the cast. So RBC cast in glomerular nephritis. WBC cast usually seen in a 
infection of the nephrons or infection of the renal parenchyma pyelonephritis or interstitial nephritis so interstitial infection or infection of the renal parenchyma there is wbc invasion and these wbcs are get excreted and form form part of the cas so wbc presence of wbc cas indicates pyelonephritis or interstitial nephritis and lastly presence of epithelial cas indicates acute tubular necrosis Tub tubular epithelium is damaged and they become part of the cas so they contain tubular epithelial cells they contain rbcs in the cas and these contain wbcs in the cas this is how you identify them on microscopy this is how an rbc cast looks wbc cast you can see here how it has a typical look epithelial cell cast these are the renal epithelial cells and this is very important both of these the broad cast which is very typical for chronic renal failure and the hyaline cast which is again smooth difficult to identify can be physiological but seen in diuretic uses and severe exercise broad cast very important chronic renal failure worst prognosis RBC cell cast glomerular nephritis WBC pyelonephritis or interstitial nephritis sometimes and epithelial acute tubular necrosis so that was about casts we took 1 minute extra but 6 minutes is good enough very high yield topic so study well